Hey, it's Grady at Twin Creek Audio back in the studio. And today I'm going to show you how you can use a spare laptop PC or tablet PC like this one and a two channel audio interface like this Audio Evo 4 as an outboard reverb processor in your studio. Now, why would you want to do something like that? Well, in my case, I have 24 individual outputs from my audio interfaces that come through the console back here, the Soundcraft Sapphire. I have 44 channels on the console. So if I want to use a plug-in reverb in the box and I want to return that reverb through the console separately from the dry signal and not blend them together because I don't like to do it that way, then I lose outputs on my interfaces for reverb returns. So I moved over to using some more outboard reverbs like the Yamaha Rev 500 that I've used in several of my mixing videos here on the channel. While that works great, Sometimes I want more reverbs, or maybe I'd like to use a convolution reverb, but I don't want to give up the outputs on the interface. I can use a spare PC. This is a original Microsoft Surface Pro, so it's an older PC. And this little two channel interface, I can use these two together as a digital reverb processor. Now this trick does work best with time-based effects like reverb or delay because of the little bit of latency that you're gonna have. But with most of these modern audio interfaces like this Evo 4, the latency is not gonna be enough to be a problem with a time-based effect like reverb. Also, you can do this with all free software. So that's what I'm gonna to use today is all things that you can download without any cost to you for whatever spare PC. You don't need a really powerful modern PC, just one that will be good enough to run a VST or two, depending on how many you want to load at a time. Usually in this case, it's just going to be one. So this is just an i5 here with four gigs of RAM. It's an original Surface Pro. And I chose this one because it's cool. It's got a touchscreen. And I thought, hey, touchscreen reverb, that's pretty cool. And I even found one plugin I'm going to show you that has a nice slider interface that works pretty well with the touchscreen. Of course, you can use any kind of interface. If you've got a spare older laptop laying around, and you've got you know any kind of old two channel interface that you had before you upgraded to the interfaces that you're using now with your outboard gear or console or whatever kind of analog things that you're interfacing your DAW with these days. Whatever you've got laying around will work okay for this. A lot of the classic reverbs back in the 80s, like the lexicons and things, you know, the quality of the converters on those were probably not as good as some of these modern interfaces. So you should be in good shape to use any kind of an inexpensive two-channel interface if you want to do this trick. So the basics of this is you would run an auxiliary send. Usually for a reverb or a time-based effect, you're going to want to send that post from the channel. On the aux end, you're going to send that post fader and not pre-fader. That way, when you turn the fader off, the effect also the effect send also gets turned down. So you want to connect an auxiliary send output to at least one channel on the interface for an input to your reverb processing that's going to be on your device. Then you would take the stereo outputs of your interface and plug those into your console, into either a stereo channel or to two channels left and right, and then hard pan those left and right for your stereo reverb return. And obviously your USB or I mean, you could even do this with an older FireWire interface if you've got something like that. But you've got you know, your connection to the computer, we'll call it, because this is USB-C, but it could be FireWire, it could be uh, you different types of USB, whatever all those are. You also will most likely want to run your VST plugin 100% wet, so you've got no dry signal coming back on your reverb return. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to hook this up and then I'm going to do a little screen capture segment, which I don't do a lot of on this channel because I'm mainly dealing with a lot of analog gear, but I am going to do a little screen capture segment to show how to set this up on your spare laptop, tablet, or PC, and then how to plug this in. So it's going to be cool. Let's get started. But we've got the tablet PC it's connected with the USB cable to the little Audio Evo 4 audio interface here. The output of AUX3 on the Sapphire is patched to the input of the audio interface with a TT to quarter inch balanced patch cable. Then the outputs of the audio interface left and right 
are patched into my HRK C2584 stereo color processor. And the main reason I'm doing that is because this has quarter inch outputs, this has quarter inch inputs. It makes it easier for me to set this up right here. Because the outputs of this come up on the patch bay, and it's easier for me to patch them over into one of the stereo channels on the console that way. And since I was doing this anyway, I figured why not turn on the louder the liftoff royal blue color modules so we can add a little bit of extra saturation to the reverb return in this case. So to set this up on a spare PC today, I'm going to use VST Host, but there is an alternative. There's this Cantabile Light 3.0. The difference in obtaining these two is for this one you have to register and they email you a serial number, but they are both free to obtain. I like VST Host the best. Of course, you can also use a regular DAW software like Reaper, but for the sake of efficiency on an older system, I'm going to go with VST Host. You can download VST Host from their site here. I'll put a link to this site in the video description. They even have skins for VST hosts. I'm going to use the default look today. And you just want to scroll down here to downloads. And most of us are going to want this 64-bit version here, which is just a zip file that you extract somewhere on your hard drive. You can get the 32-bit version if you have an even older PC that doesn't support 64-bit apps. So once you've extracted VST host, to a location on your hard drive, make a shortcut to it, and then when you run the software, you're going to want to set up the audio device. That's under the Devices menu, Wave, and here is where you'll select your sound card driver. If you're using the ASIO driver, you'll set only the output port, and that will configure all of them, your sample rate, and your buffer size. Then under Engine, Configure, is where you will look at all of your inputs and outputs. I have both of my inputs set to the number one input on my device because I'm only running a mono auxiliary send into the audio interface to come into the reverb. And then of course the engine outputs here on this tab are set to my main left and right outputs. These are the outputs that the reverb will be sent from to return to the console. Next, you'll want to set up your plugins under the file menu. You'll set your plugin paths. As you can see here, I have mine set. So once those are in place, then you go back to the file menu and you can scan your plugins right here. That will scan all of your VSTs. Then you're able to load the VST plugins from this icon right here. Now, obviously, I have a lot of things on here turned off. This does have a recorder bar and a keyboard bar that you can turn on but we're not using it for that. So we're just going to add a single plugin. In this case, I'm going to add the Tau Reverb 3 because I like it. And then you can see our audio engine input here, the plugin, and then the audio engine output over here. Click the knob icon here, and that will bring up the interface for your plugin. Of course, you want to run this without any dry signal. And that's the basics of setting up VST Host to do this. Now, VST Host will do a lot of different things. So I would definitely recommend watching other videos or checking out further information on VST Host because obviously you can run things in parallel. You can do all kinds of things with this, but it is a really good solution for what I'm trying to do today. I've done my best to get the camera angle just right so you can see the screen, the touch screen here on the tablet and you can see the reverb return fader right here as I turn this up and down. So the song I'm using for this demonstration is called Something Tells Me. It's from the Completest debut album in some April dusk. So we're going to first try the Oral River plugin. I like this one because it's great for the touch screen. The way I've got this sitting, it's kind of hard to use the mouse pad because it's kind of hanging off the edge there. So touchscreen interface on this is really good. I've got the dry signal turned off, wet all the way up, and I loaded the large chamber preset and just tweaked the reverb time, I think. So I'm going to try this on the vocal tracks on this song so you can hear what this rig sounds like.
Here is the lead vocal with the reverb. I can remember when we crossed that bridge in your 82 rabbit. Pine cut moonlight shining down on me. It colors everything so ceaselessly. The Mississippi flow into the sea. Here is the reverb by itself, without the dry vocal signal, just the reverb. We've actually got three different vocal tracks on this song. I've set all of those to this reverb here, this rig. I feel like it's kind of a rigged up thing, but it really works well. So I've got all three of these vocal tracks that are in these mix going to the reverb. So let's put all of those. So all three vocals and find the section where that's all happening with the acoustic guitar and everything. Let's see. So here's all three vocals with the reverb. It's really cool because I've got this touch screen over here. So now I'm going to do the same thing, play these vocals, and I'm going to lengthen the reverb time while we're listening to it. I've also got this little sampled sound. It's kind of like one of those old Optagons, I think, where it played the sounds off of a, a disc, but it used like optical technology, like the old film projectors used. So that's what this is, it's an Optagon, and I'm feeding that to the reverb too. This setup also makes it possible to run a convolution reverb plugin as a send effect from your console. So I'm going to do that now to add some kind of a room sound to the drum tracks on this song. So I've loaded up a different plugin here on our little outboard reverb rig to try on drums. I'm going to send snare and toms through this reverb and I've loaded up one of the presets here on uh, impulse record. Convology XT and it's the small room true stereo small room preset I've loaded up so let's try that on the drums That's pretty cool. Pretty cool sounding. Convolution reverb on the drums as a send effect from the console. This is turning out to be pretty useful. It sounds pretty good. The drums sound huge and that's the True Stereo Large Room preset here on Convology XT that I downloaded at no cost just to use for this video demonstration. I think I'm gonna keep that around on here keep this rig this is cool 
Let's hear the drum reverb without the dry drum. So this is just the reverb return from our rig over here. Let's put the drums with the convolution reverb into the full mix now. And of course, I don't have the reverb on the vocals anymore because I moved that over to use for the drums for the demonstration. I haven't added more reverbs to the vocals. I'll just pull them down a little bit or something. Now I've changed out the reverb plugin once again. This time it's the Tal Reverb 3, which I really like for the touchscreen because I can change things with sliders and I have dry turned off, wet all the way up. Stereo input processing is turned off on this plugin since I've got a mono input and I'm so mono in, stereo out by turning off the stereo input because I'm not using that. The other plugins seem to kind of do that on their own, but this one you do have that little option right there. So let's try the Tal Reverb 3 with our little external digital, what, what is this thing? What, do you, what, would you, what would I call this? What, what do you call this thing? Like this VST, this external VST rig, let's call it that. Let's try some vocals through the Tal Reverb 3 with our external VST effects set up. <sighs> I love the Tal Reverb 3 and I think it's so cool getting to use a plug-in like that in combination with my console here on this touchscreen. It's really kind of fun. I want to run one more thing through the Tal Reverb 3 here with our external VST rig and just see what it sounds like on that Optagon sample track because it might be really cool. Let's put that Optagon with that Tal Reverb in the full mix and hear it. Oh 
Yeah, that reverbs a little much for this song, but it's a lot of fun. It's really fun having this setup. I think it's really cool. This is really enjoyable for me to experiment with something like this. I'm gonna try and make this something that I can use in the studio more often. And like I said before, with time-based effects, this kind of a setup should work really well. Well, that was a lot of fun, and it's a really good way to put a spare interface and a spare laptop that you have laying around to good use in your studio. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the Twin Creek Audio YouTube channel if you have not done so already, as well as checking all the links in the video description for ways that you can help support this channel. As always, I hope everyone out there has an excellent and wonderful day, night, evening, weekend, weekday, hour, minute, second, nanosecond. Whatever it is you're having, have a good one. Thanks so much for watching.